give us an opportunity to share some of the exciting work ahead of us here at Station Square. Uh, tonight, we're going to be reviewing the 30% design for the Station Square station as part of our station improvement program. And improving this, this particular station is an investment in the future of our fixed guideway assets. It encourages our transit ridership and brings in new riders while hopefully improving the amenities for longtime riders as well. Uh, station Square is the second station area plan that's going through this design process. The first was Negley Station, where constructed, construction is expected to begin this summer. Uh, we're actually taking a uh, construction contract to our board this week. Um, next week, we're going to have a similar meeting uh, related to Dormont Junction Station, uh, which is also at the 30% design phase. So if you are interested in an, and able, uh, please register for that event as well. Um, we want to provide a safe space for you to provide open and honest feedback to us. Um, so we're uh, welcoming all participation and comments, positive, negative, uh, whatever you want to say uh, to help us uh, improve the design for this station and the station area uh, is going to help us deliver a, a better project and something that meets the needs of all of our writers and all of our stakeholders. Um, so we're really excited, as I said, to have you all participate. And um, I'm going to turn it over now to uh, Breen Masiotra, uh, who is our section manager of planning here at Port Authority, and she'll be able to uh, walk you through the presentation. So thank you very much. And here you go, Breen. Thank you, David. Um, I will not introduce myself again since David just did an excellent job, um, but uh, my role here at Port Authority uh, in se uh, Section Man Manager of Planning and in previous roles has been to oversee our Transit Oriented Communities program from the beginning. So uh, it's very exciting to have this project be at this stage and I'm going to talk a little bit about how we got here in the context in which this project is happening. So Port Authority Excuse is... Me. Can I, can, I a quick, can I ask a quick question? I called in the URL on the link that was sent out via Microsoft Teams is not working. Is there a code for this meeting to join online presentation? One of our communication staff will, will talk with you directly about that. So our station improvement program under which the project we're here to discuss tonight is happening is uh, was created to um, enable transit oriented development in the Port Authority system. And if we're going to talk about TOD, we should, um, you know, all know, uh, have the same understanding of what that is. So you can see here in the photo on the right, Glass House, which is transit oriented development in Station Square. Um, and the general definition we use for transit oriented development is um, uh, dense, uh, mixed use, walkable development that is close to high quality transit. So in this case, you know, we have apartment buildings and, and first floor um, commercial space um, in a very walkable area, I'm sure you're all familiar with. Um, and of course, with light rail, bus and incline all uh, immediately available. Um, in transit oriented development, Port Authority works um, in a couple of different ways. We um, sometimes are a sponsor for joint development. So that is when we're doing TOD on Port Authority property. Sometimes we're a stakeholder for uh, transit oriented development. And that is uh, Station Square is a great example of that where we are very interested in supporting and, and helping uh, to create the best TOD possible, but it's being done privately um, and we don't control the project. We're just there to help it be the best project it can be. And then sometimes we're an advocate um, and that has to do with um, advocating for sustainable land use decisions, um, looking for zoning that will support transit oriented development and similar policy uh, issues um, throughout the city and county. So our transit oriented communities program um, includes a number of pieces, one of which is the station improvement program that we're here to talk about in more detail tonight. It also includes TOD guidelines, so that is a, a best practice guide for the design and planning of transit oriented development in Allegheny County. It's available on our website. Um, we, again, like I've just mentioned on the last slide, sometimes advocate for TOD zoning in communities uh, across the county where they have uh, transit facilities. Um, 
we work on first and last mile connections to transit. So helping people make that trip from their home to their to their transit stop or station or vice versa. Um, and then, of course, um, joint development, which I also mentioned, which is transit oriented development on our property. Next slide, please. So the station improvement program um, under our transit oriented communities program, the, the goal of this program is to invest capital resources in our light rail and busway stations in order to help to catalyze transit oriented development in order to encourage that development to happen. And um, we have been working on this program for a while. We started out way back and did a very nerdy data driven evaluation of all of our stations in the light rail and busway systems to decide where there was the greatest opportunity for TOD. And then we've been doing planning at those stations, working our way down the list. Um, and Station Square was the second project we undertook. As David mentioned, um, Negley uh, was our first and that's going to construction soon. This is our second, Dormont was our third. And so these projects are now moving through that design process so that we can make the station improvement that will help to support the nearby development. Next slide, please. So in Station Square, um, we have a lot of facilities, as I mentioned, the you know, TOD sort of hinges on they're, they're being transit present, and uh, especially if it's high quality transit that allows people to uh, not have to own a car, but be able to live their life relying on transit. And that's certainly true here in Station Square, where there are 13 bus routes, three light rail lines, and an incline all immediately um, together. Uh, we know that this is a huge location for transit ridership. We have almost 6,000 trips per day happening in this area, um, which is the third um, busiest location in our system. And when we prepared to do this plan, um, and we did a we did a planning process, uh, you might recall, hopefully some of you participated in that um, back in 2017, 2018, that led to the architectural design work we're doing now. We got a lot of input from folks. You can see the meeting. One of the one of the public workshops from that process is shown on the right hand side of the slide here. Um, we talked to the community. We also talked to riders. We did a survey at the station talking to people at the platform. And then we also talked to our staff across all different departments about how the station was working for them. And it was all that input together that got to um, the proposal that that we put in the plan. Um, that we shared uh, with all of you and has been on our website for the last few years and now is being advanced through the design process. And with that, I will turn it over to uh, Maura Egler, our manager, uh, project manager in transit oriented communities to talk more about the details of the plan and the design. Thanks, Breen. Um, so hello, everybody. My name is Maura Egler. I'm the transit oriented communities project manager at the Port Authority, and I will be walking you through some of our design slides this evening. Um, so these first couple of slides are images from the 2018 Station Square station area plan that uh, Breen was just describing. So we're just gonna um, do a little reminder of kind of the conceptual design that came out of that process first. Um, and these were created, of course, with community input. So this slide shows um, the kind of whole, what we're calling Station Square Transit Center. So that includes the Mon Incline Lower Station on the left-hand side, and then of course the Station Square Light Rail Transit and Bus Station to the right. Um, so the, this transit center has light rail, bus, busway, and incline transit service. And the two halves of the center operate largely as separate facilities. So this conceptual design process was focused on kind of how to bring those two together. Um, one of the main goals of the station improvement program is to improve station access. So this design proposes to do that in a couple of ways. Uh, one is the widening of the sidewalk kind of on the outside of the station square portion along East Carson, which allows for safer and easier pedestrian access. Um, the addition of a bus pull off in front of an expanded uh, bus stop on East Carson um, which we'll see detailed drawings of later, um, will also allow for improved um, bus access to the station. Um, 
and PennDOT is proposing to make some improvements at the intersection of Smithfield and Carson here, uh, which include improved crosswalks, new um, signals with pedestrian lead time, um, and then the reconfiguration of the eastbound lane outside of Station Square to accommodate a bus pull-off area, which we'll show in a few slides. Um, and then kind of at the bottom right hand corner of this slide, this is a conceptual view of the intersection at Smithfield and Carson, which shows kind of an extension of a textured panel wall. So that blue, those blue um, illustrations you see. So that um, that's along the tracks. Um, it's kind of meant to be wayfinding. Um, sort of to let people know where the bus and incline are, and also visual connections to um, some textured glass that's proposed at the station square station, which we'll see um, in a few slides here. And again, this is just an attempt to kind of bring both of, this, uh, of the parts of the transit center together and orient people um, to the site. So next, again, conceptual design here. This is an image from 2018 from our plan. This is the Mon Incline Lower Building, the conceptual drawing here. So we're proposing a new kind of rider plaza here to the left of the station, which will include um, seating in the form of seat walls here along the sidewalk, as well as increased plantings, um, street trees that will include green stormwater infrastructure. And then along the back of the site, there's um, an access road um, being proposed, which is kind of what that shuttle is riding on there. And we'll get into more detail um, on that a little bit later. And then finally, this is the conceptual design for the light rail transit station. Um, <clears throat> the existing station is shown in the image on the top of the screen. Um, currently, there are these kind of brick parapets or kind of wall elements um, at the station that don't allow for much natural light to come through to the platform, so it feels kind of dark and, and secluded. Um, also, the architecture really throughout looks pretty dated, so the proposed conceptual design, which is directly below uh, the current design that's shown there, um, features new backlit textured panels, which are those blue panels pictured there. Um, to make the station feel lighter, provide some station identity as well. Um, we're also proposing to relocate the platform, platform entrance, um, which is currently right next to the archway that you see in the drawing. And we will be moving it so people actually walk straight through the archway to access um, the platforms and the bus stops um, inside there. Um, just kind of a more logical way to enter the site. <clears throat> And then, um, so the bottom left hand image shows kind of a cross section of the platform. Um, this will feature new seating um, in the form of benches that are um, in line with our station design standards, as well as the, they're the ones that are, um, if you're familiar with East Liberty Station, that currently are there. Um, and then this new seating, so by removing the brick parapet and placing those blue screens that I described, We'll actually be able to set the new seating back a little bit further so that the platform, uh, the outbound platform is exp expanded and widened. So you have a lot more room to um, be waiting for your train on the platform there. And then the final image here on the bottom right is showing um, some decorative screening along East Carson that would be located underneath the um, LRT overpass. And we'll see some more drawings of that in a second here. <clears throat> So what we're looking at now, these are the new drawings, the 30% design phase. As Breen described, um, what we just saw, they were conceptual designs that came out of the public planning process. Um, and this, this is now kind of the next step in that process. So this is the first round of drawings that will go on to become construction documents for the new station. Um, we have an, an opportunity to review these documents right now, the 30% phase, again at 60%, and then finally again at 90%. So this is the first step in the design process. Um, you can see this is the landscape concept plan of the whole site. It looks very similar to the conceptual design that we just saw earlier. We're making sure that these more detailed designs reflect um, the designs created in the planning process with community input. So here we see um, a lot of new proposed landscaping on the Mon Incline site. We'll, we'll get a, a more zoomed in detailed look at that. Uh, in a few slides. There are also going to be some canopy street trees that are proposed um, along East Carson outside of Station Square Station. 
So next up, this is the proposed overall platform view. Um, I wanna definitely make sure to point out on the far kind of left-hand side of this image is the addition of an accessible east side station exit from the outbound platform. So this is a new accessible exit that does not currently exist that will be a ramp. So some of our um, flyers incorrectly stated that this would be an exit stair. Just wanted to clarify that this will actually be an exit ramp, so it will be accessible. Um, so here, in addition to that new ramp exit, we see uh, a new archway design with, with some illumination on the top. Again, we see those um, backlit textured panels. And then we also see the expanded um, Carson Street bus stop to the right of the archway with that blue canopy. Um, that will also accommodate the bus pull off uh, that I described earlier. And we will see some detail on that in a few slides here. So next slide is the outbound platform design. So this is just a little bit more detail here on these panels. Um, it will provide some screening, but still let natural light in. Um, it will also act as sort of some station identification as well with the station name um, on the panels. And then of course, across the tracks on the inbound platform, you can see same panels, um, same seating. So similar, similar design. This is looking um, along Carson Street again at the outbound platform detail. So next we have some, a little detail of the uh, proposed expanded bus stop on East Carson. Um, this will allow the sidewalks to be widened. So there'll be more space for people on the sidewalk. There'll be new seating. Again, we'll have this new covered um, canopy with more of this textured glass in the back. Um, so, and again, the bus pullover area is in front of this here. It's marked as like a bus aisle, I believe. Um, and this will basically just increase you know the amount it'll, it'll make it easier to ride the bus here more pleasant easier for the bus to pull over um, if necessary this space is large enough to accommodate two articulated buses at once so those are the buses the large ones with kind of the accordion center if needed this um, new pull-off area can accommodate two of those at one time so this is an aerial view of what we were just looking at um, so again, we see the new um, bus stop canopy. We see the relocated crosswalk coming through under the archway on the illuminated top of the archway. And then we also see some decorative paving along the sidewalk here, um, which will be carried through to the Mon Incline site to again, kind of unify them um, from a design standpoint. Okay, so this is a detail of the new exit ramp that I was describing earlier. So as you can see, um, we will be, this, there's currently no um, exit on the Eastern side of the station at all. There's no way to access the station there. So this would allow um, an accessible exit for people getting off the outbound platform. Um, it will have a new canopy similar to the one on the new bus stop. So to provide some shelter and shade there. Um, we're proposing some kind of mural, public art that could be possibly located on this concrete wall here, just to give the station a little bit more personality. Again, this is the same view or same uh, idea, different view, um, just a little bit closer up. So this, again, we have the accessible ramp, the ADA compliant railing here, um, and we can see another view of this uh, new canopy. And this is the final image um, for Station Square. So again, this is a similar view, standing on the sidewalk uh, right alongside East Carson Street, looking back at the station. You can see the ramp um, proposed mural. And then this is um, some decorative sort of screening that would be placed along the sidewalk um, underneath the LRT overpass. So next we're gonna move on to the Mon Incline station area. So this is the landscape concept uh, that we showed a few slides ago, just with some more detail. Um, as you can see, there's gonna be a lot of increased landscaping here, um, a lot of plantings, um, including some street trees that will include green stormwater infrastructure and their planters, so to manage stormwater on site. Um, there will be a new rider plaza, uh, which is shown in this drawing to the right of the station. Um, and that basically will provide people with public space to kind of gather, there'll be seating, there will be um, covered bike parking here as well. Uh, and again, we see that decorative pavement that I pointed out um, in the last slide from Station Square, just as a unifying design element. Um, 
and then so currently what is kind of located here where the plaza is proposed right now that's employee parking and so to accommodate the creation of this we would um, place the employee parking kind of behind the station on this new access road so this access road is not currently here and it has several possible uses um, so the first as i mentioned is um, accommodating our employee parking needed for the station um, it also can accommodate construction vehicles and maintenance vehicles. Sometimes we need to do repairs on them on incline. Um, and that includes sometimes giant cranes and other vehicles needed um, to do repairs on that structure. So this road would accommodate those. Um, would also accommodate replacement shuttles. So when the incline isn't running, we do run shuttles um, to uh, facilitate service. And so what would happen is this would be a great place for those shuttles to drop off and pick people up from the lower station um, instead of having to stop right on busy um, West Carson or another kind of not ideal location. So this would be a safe area for people to get on and off. Um, it also allows the shuttle to be able to turn around more easily. So it gives us that kind of flexibility. This road can also be used um, for detours as needed. So it has a lot of different purposes. Um, also to point out, you will see there is kind of a ramp coming up uh, from that plaza, and that is an accessible ramp leading up to the road to ensure that there's accessible access um, for the shuttle. So if people are boarding the shuttles and need an accessible entrance, there is one right there. And then finally, um, we're just going to show this is sort of the proposed elevation or kind of facade of the station, uh, Mon Incline Station itself. We're not really changing very much here. This is a historic building, so we want to keep it largely the way it is. Um, we're just proposing, you know, some different signage here, some new lighting. And of course, the biggest difference is the entrance. So the main goal is to install a sliding door at the main entrance to eliminate the conflict uh, that currently occurs between the door and the sidewalk and make it easier for people with wheelchairs, strollers, bicycles to get into the building. So right now the doors open outwards onto this very kind of tiny little paved platform and it's just it's very awkward. It's not um, terribly accessibly friendly. So we are proposing some sliding doors that would eliminate that conflict. That is all the designs we have to show this evening. I wanted to uh, point your attention to this project website, which we have, which is portauthority.org slash station square. And this is where you'll find all the updated project information. We'll be uploading tonight's slides to this website. We'll also be uploading a copy of the recording um, so that if people weren't able to attend, they can watch this um, at their own time. And um, we'll be updating this as we as the project moves forward and we um, you know, the design evolves. So check back there um, to get updates. And with that, oh, and this just wanted to point out, this is a little um, kind of rendering of what the illuminated top might look like of the archway that I that I was showing earlier. So just a little, little fun photograph there. So uh, with that, I think we'll take questions and comments. Thank you, Maura. So we're now going to begin the Q&A session. Um, by starting with the chat bar. But in addition to the chat bar, if you'd like to ask a question, you can use the raise your hand feature um, and then we'll be sure to call your name. So uh, we do have one question in the chat to start and anyone can feel free to add something in the chat. But uh, Sheen says, non-Pittsburgh residents get lost easily when they arrive at Station Square Station. Are we going to address the steps that lead to Mount Washington? And Sheen, if you want to unmute um, as well, uh, you're welcome to. Yeah. But basically, I ended up being two questions. One was to mention that some people get lost. Directions are not that clear. Because I've had people ask me since I ride the transit a lot. And the other one is since I live in Mount Washington, or there it is. Besides the incline, is there any steps or something to go? And what about the other Duquesne Heights incline? So I'll, I can start um, with the first question about it being sort of hard to navigate. Um, 
definitely part of the station area plan calls for wayfinding signage. I kind of showed a little bit of that at the beginning, um, but that was definitely a main goal of that plan was to improve the signage on site and make it easier to figure out where you are and where you're supposed to go <laughs> um, and where you're not supposed to be also. Um, so that's definitely part of the plan to um, enhance signage at this station, but also um, throughout our system. So we are actually working on a system-wide um, wayfinding signage plan currently um, that would come up with um, strategies to better address on-site wayfinding from our stations, because it's definitely something we hear about a lot and something we know needs some improvement. So we're we're trying to um, we're trying to do that. And as far as the steps, I'm not um, familiar with steps to Mount Washington. Breen, I don't know if you wanted to yeah. address yeah. that question. So I, I can address the, the steps question, um, which has a couple of parts. My guess is you might be remembering that there was a development proposal on Grandview Avenue that involved a very large staircase to connect to Station Square many years ago. Um, that proposal is no longer active. Um, it was... Um, many generations of proposals ago for that particular site. Um, and so uh, that private project um, is definitely not on the table. Steps are usually owned and maintained by the city of Pittsburgh. Um, they have 800 sets across the city that already exist to maintain. So it's unlikely that they would be building new ones, especially one of that magnitude. The good news is, um, there are other ways to get up and down and thankfully the incline is right there um, available for folks to use. So um, that's what Port Authority is is able to provide in terms of vertical circulation to Mount Washington. Uh, Mo Moira, could you put the, the, the diagram back on, up on the screen so that we could so that we could uh, know what we're talking about? Yes, just of the whole site. Yeah, thank you. Sure. Thank you, Breen and Moira. All right, so it looks like we have a hand raised from JK. Uh, JK, would you like to go ahead and unmute yourself? Sure, thanks. Um, nice presentation, much needed upgrades here to see that will be happening in the future. Um, I have a question about the bus drop-off area. You noted you can fit two of the articulating buses in that zone. How does that affect the two lanes that currently travel eastbound on West Carson into that intersection? Are you taking over the right-hand lane to make that accommodation? So yes, um, the, there are proposed uh, improvements to that intersection that PennDOT is, um, has proposed, has designs for, and um, I think we're, you know, sort of hoping that it will be implemented pretty soon here. Um, but one of the kind of proposals there is to um, reconfigure the lanes going east on um, East Carson Street and actually would that area would become one lane for that portion um, to accommodate that bus pull off area. So th there is a plan to reconfigure that, um, reconfigure that right there. So it is only one lane just in that direction. I just wanna add that, that the proposal to, to provide this bus pull off and to reconfigure the intersection and the travel lanes was put forth by PennDOT um, who tends to be pretty conservative about ensuring that traffic can keep moving. So they came to us with this proposal. And of course, we were supportive of having the space to pull off in this location. Yeah, I think it's great. I guess in conjunction with that, who then will be handled? Will PennDOT also handle new and improved crosswalks at that intersection? Because it's a little bit like Frogger, whether you're driving there or on the bus, of how people like to cross uh, West Carson at that intersection to get to the T station. Yes, um, so they will be um, sort of realigning the crosswalks there. Um, that's the the goal is to try to improve the the crossing. Um, because uh, yes, as you say, it is a lot like Frogger sometimes <laughs> with people trying to cross. It's not the most straightforward intersection. Um, so that is part of the proposal. 
um, to kind of increase protections there. And actually there is, I should have, I meant to put a picture of that in this presentation, but I didn't. But um, there will, there is um, a rendering of that proposal in the station area plan that's on our website. And I can make sure we post a, a picture of that so people can kind of see it um, and call it out separately. So it's a little easier to find. All right. So it looks. Oh, did that address your question then, Dave? The yes, I'll go look for that uh, image on the on the website. Th thanks. Great. Uh, I'm just going to jump in and add that I put the link to the PennDOT website for the East Carson Street Improvement Project in the chat if people want to go and check out the information that PennDOT has available about the project. Um, I'm not sure if it has the full designs available, but um, that is PennDOT's public information on the project. Thank you, Breen. And for those on the call who can't read the chat, the chat had said, what, what do you have to make crossing easier for 4851 riders who otherwise have to run through traffic? OK, so um we've got a hand raised from nadine luther nadine would you like to unmute yourself sure um i just have a question um i remember seeing something in the news a while back about kind of changing the stop on the other side of east carson where um the nightclubs used to be where the apartments are now. Um, will there be, um, is that still going to remain? And are they going to put a pedestrian crossing right there? Or are you still going to have to cross at the intersection? Because I know a lot of people kind of jaywalk and it can be very dangerous, you know, walking across from the T station to the other side. Um, yes, that's definitely an issue. Um, we're going to go ahead and correct me if, if I'm wrong, but I believe that I don't believe there are official plans to relocate the crosswalk right now. Um, I think it's the plan that PennDOT has is to slightly realign it. So it's a little bit, so it serves a little bit better, but it won't, I believe, be like directly to that bus stop. Okay, um, that's, that's right, and let me add that um, PennDOT had initially proposed to to move our bus stop to the corner uh, as part of their project, um, but it turns out that the bus stop is on private property and not in the public right of way, so they are no longer willing to undertake that, but Port mm -hmm. Authority is still committed to working with the property owner as development occurs on the site to move the bus stop closer to the corner to discourage the mid-block crossing and make it more convenient for people to use the proper crosswalk. Thank you. Does anyone on the phone uh, who's called in on the phone have any questions that would like to unmute? It would be star six to unmute just as a reminder. Dan DeBone uh, from Port Authority says design and concept is exceptional. Green space and road behind the incline to assist per shuttles and more is super cool, efficient, and more. Thank you, Dan. Does anyone else on the phone or uh, have anything else to add or any questions or comments for the project team? Uh, yes, this is Holly Dick. Will there be any accessibility amongst the signing, the new signage, any braille, large print, uh, any kind of access, accessible signage? Wayfinding, I guess you said that would be. 
Yeah, so we actually, as I mentioned, are working through a wayfinding signage um, plan right now um, for the whole system. So it will include um, kind of specifications for things like that. Um, I don't, I'm, in the conceptual, this the plan, um, which was done in 2018 with the 10% con conceptual design, I don't believe we got into that level of detail with the signage, but this wayfinding signage plan that we're currently working on will get into that level of detail. And I think that's definitely something we're going to make a priority to make sure they're accessible. Okay, does anyone else have any questions? I'm not seeing anything in the chat. Anybody on the phone? Okay, are there any final comments from the project team? Um, just wanted to note that on the project website um, I pointed to earlier, I think we'll make sure to have um, a, an area where you can comment, you can submit comments um, on the website. So if you think of something after the fact, um, you can submit it on the website and we will uh, respond to you. Yes, great. So thank you so much to everyone who joined us today. Thank you to uh, the project team for a great presentation and all of our Port Authority staff on the call. Um, oh, it looks like we just got a comment. Uh, Dave says, I love the look. The glass will make it much nicer. And I like the artistic reference to the Smithfield Bridge. Thanks, Dave. And Phyllis says, thank you for this opportunity. So thank you everyone so much. As Maura said, it's portauthority.org slash station square for the website to review the design documents and a copy of this presentation will, and the recording will be posted there this week. So please uh, spread the word, leave comments there as well. And we thank you for joining us today. Thanks everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great evening.